Alright, hello everyone. My name is Gary. My name is Gary. Alright, so, who's uncomfortable talking about sex? A couple of blank faces. Alright, consider this. There's a chance you're uncomfortable talking about this because you haven't been extensively educated on the topic. Well, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Well, more specifically, sex education. Alright. My main claim is that implementing proper sex ed in the school system will prevent unplanned pregnancies in teens. Supporting this, I'm going to be bringing up two things. First, current sex ed is ineffective. And second, kids getting comprehensive sex ed have fewer sex-related problems as a result. I'm going to start off by a few definitions. Clear the air. Proper sex ed, when I say that, I mean otherwise known as comprehensive. We'll get to that in a little bit. It's more than just abstinence-only based education, and I'll define this a little bit more later on. You're going to be hearing the word TPP programming a couple times. That's just referring to teen pregnancy prevention programming. School system, by that I mean either middle school through high school, kind of really depends on the school district's requirements through health, also possibly community-based programming. Let's get right into it. What's the problem? Well, a 2016 article from the Journal of School Health puts things into perspective, I think, a little bit. Roughly half of all pregnancies in the United States are unplanned. And among 15 and 19-year-old women, 82% of pregnancies are unplanned. 80%, that's so many. Further, over the past two decades, teen birth rates in the United States have gone down. However, they do remain higher than most developed countries. Now, this isn't like states, this is countries throughout the entire world. So why is this a problem? Um, a study led by doctors from the Division of Reproductive Health and the National Center for Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion states, a particular concern of births to younger teens, 15 to 17 years old, who are at greatest risk for poor medical, social, and economic outcomes. So these kids who are having children at a young age, while they're still children themselves, are less likely to be successful later on in life. How do we prevent this from happening? Well, education. However, that's not so simple. Again, from the same journal of school health, sexuality education is a controversial topic, and the social and political climate on this can often impede availability of programming. So let's get into my second claim. Current sex ed is ineffective. Another 2015 study published by the Journal of School Health states about one-third of school districts in the United States do not teach contraceptive use and U.S. teachers are less likely to report that their school includes teen pregnancy prevention TPP programming that teaches about birth control methods. Another one from the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report, this is a study led by multiple doctors both on the scholarly and the medical level. About one in four female teens aged 15 through 17 years old have ever had sex. Among those who have, about 8 in 10 had not received any formal education before the first time they had sex. I'll repeat that. Among those teenage girls who have had sex, 8 in 10 have not received any education whatsoever before the first time they did. But Gabby, you might be saying, I was talked to about sex in health or by my parents. So let's talk about what's going on in the world of sex education. An original article from the Journal of Adolescent Health explained, formal sex education programs aimed at reducing risks of teenage pregnancy and STD acquisition generally promote one of two messages regarding sexual activity. The first one is abstinence-only messages. The second is comprehensive sex education. The first one is not effective. So, this first article, actually the same article that I just mentioned, it states that systematic review suggests that effects of abstinent-only programming on sexual risk behavior have been minimal. So it's just all saying abstinence-only sex education is ineffective. So what then, if what's being taught is ineffective, what's effective? Kids getting comprehensive sex ed have fewer sex-related problems as a result. So according to 2016 article from the Journal of Public Health, the first one I mentioned at the beginning of the speech, when implemented in fidelity, comprehensive, evidence-based teen pregnancy prevention, TPP programs, have been shown to be an effective means of reducing risky behaviors associated with teen pregnancy in a variety of settings and populations. You know what, it does work. 
In a study comparing school-based teen pregnancy prevention programming, short and long-term studies have shown that this approach results in students who are more likely to use contraception, delay first sexual intercourse, and who are also less likely to report teen pregnancy. This, you know, comprehensive based sex education is actually recommended in lieu of abstinence only. Um, Megan Kamwasi, she's a political scientist in the health program at the National Conference of State. I just sort of noted, California once had one of the highest teen rates in the nation. 1991, 71 out of 1,000 girls between the ages of 15 and 19 gave birth. Today, in March 2014, that number is down to 27. So why does this all matter? Well, it proves that comprehensive sex ed works. So we've seen that abstinence-only sex ed, which is what's mostly being taught, is ineffective. And we've seen that comprehensive sex ed works by lowering the risk of pregnancy in adolescents who receive type of education and has notable widespread effects as seen in lower rates California. So without further ado, implementing proper sex ed in the school system will prevent unplanned pregnancies and teens. Thanks. It's okay. All right, the proposition's clearly identified. You do have a preview. I thought it was a little bit strange that you don't really use that preview in the secondary points uh, clearly to organize the structure. I mean, I heard some references to the ideas there, but it, in the body of the speech, it seems like you're more concerned with the data rather than the inferences that we're going to be drawing from the data. I thought you had good explanations of the concepts in several places. There are a couple of things that I think are kind of missing in making some of the links that you're arguing for. For example, at the very end when you mentioned the California and the change in the uh, birth rate among those girls in those particular points, I'm, I'm missing the link that says California adopted a comprehensive sex program uh, back in the 1990s at some point, and that's what's made the difference. I just have a difference in what the teen pregnancy numbers are without any necessary reference to that uh, TPP type program that you're talking about. I assume that that's there someplace, but it wasn't very clearly stated in the argument. I thought you did an excellent job citing a variety of um, authoritative sources on the subject, and you usually gave good qualifications on the, on a lot of those points. Uh, you know, the the head-to-head the -head statistical comparison, I think, is, is missing. We've got uh, you know, a, a criticism of abstinence-only programs that says their impact is minimal, and then uh, the the general statement in favor of the TPP uh, is that it is effective. And again, you know, quantifiably, I'm not exactly sure how significantly apart those two things are. Um, you know, and it's it's a little bit strange. You making you're making the argument that. Uh, a third of teens don't get this contraceptive kind of information, but you acknowledge at the beginning of your argument that the teen pregnancy rate has been going down in the United States. So uh, is that because we've expanded the number of TPP type programs, or has there been some other factor that's affecting this? And that might be the more effective or more important factor that influences the outcomes of the, of the research that you're talking about. I just, I just think that there are places here and there where Connections are implied, but not very clearly demonstrated. But I, like I said, I thought you had excellent evidence in the, most of the arguments citing those particular points. Um, the presentation's pretty effective with your explanations. Maybe you could read a little bit less, but uh, I, I didn't think that it was a big problem. All right, thank you.